I don't feel like a welder or a fabricator. I feel just like a grinder. Man, that's what we're gonna do today. I don't have a fancy tube nodger, so we're gonna rely on a couple grinding tools to notch some tubing. We're gonna take from square cuts, miter them, notch them, in part two of a three-part series on these Chevy running board steps. Today, we're gonna focus on this coping stuff. How do we get this notch all done with just some grinding tools, with nothing fancy? So let's go about it. Let's make some templates and get to grinding. Ooh, I'm, I, can't, I can't wait. I just can't wait. Pardon my face, it's really hot. It's really hot and there's just tons of, tons of gunk on my hands and everything. When you handle all this material, you get dirty, especially on your face when you're trying to wipe the sweat out of it. So I'm sure I look like a grease monkey, but we got everything bent. Now, the first thing we got to consider is how, how do we find out what we miter this piece at? What angle is it that we're looking for to get it to match to what we've already built? Those goblins, those shop goblins put this other one together. Now I got to match it. So we've got our angle on this miter. What do we cut it to? The 50 degree bend that we put it in, if we did a bend, considering that 90 would be coming straight off, we put a bend in that tubing about 50 degrees. Okay, now we need to make sure we have that cut right. What do we cut this at? Well, it's actually just the, the remainder of that 90. So we cut all these miters at 40 degrees. That means this piece of the step, all these little internal pieces, braces, supports, this piece that's going from a 50 to a 50 is still like considered like that, that same orientation since it's parallel with that header piece. And then we have a couple of these random ones that we did on the ends. These are gonna be pretty much eyeballed and we're gonna go into eyeballing stuff too because I'm really good with my eyeballs. We know that we're gonna do everything as far as a miter cut. We're gonna do everything at 40 degrees. The setting up a saw can be tricky. These band saws aren't just put a blade on it and cut. You've got to go about tracking the blade and making sure that it stays square with it. If you've got a longer piece and it's on a jack stand, we got to make sure everything's level. The, the saw itself is level. But if you've got a smaller piece, you can pretty much guarantee that's level just sitting plain on there. Just make sure there's no schmutz or anything underneath. We set our saw for 40 degrees right where that ends. So we're going to, oh, I always take this practice piece, just a, a piece of drop laying around so we can get to make sure we get a nice 40 degree cut. What we're trying to do on something that we're, we don't necessarily need, get this thing cut and then we can freaking send it on with the rest of them. Once our practice miter is done, we're gonna double check this thing with an angle finder, lay it on something flat and put an angle finder on there, make sure it's at that 40 degrees that we're looking for. Uh, and then we know that the saw is set to go and we can just, you know, send it. The other thing we wanna make sure is the roll is right. We have a couple cuts that are gonna have perpendicular miters where they're, you know, if you drew a line, they would probably intersect at some point. And then the other ones are gonna be parallel. So the cuts are gonna be running the same direction. We're gonna have a couple of those and one of the other ones. We gotta make sure that rolls right. One thing you can do is roll it in there whenever you got the angle on one side and then maybe put an angle finder or something on there to make sure that roll is correct. But I won't be able to get nothing in this jaw here. So I just eyeball it, just look straight up and down. You can pretty much see that that cut is straight up and down. So when you do your miters, the roll is right. Or you can, you know, make a reference line all the way across, make some points that you can use. But for this, we're just gonna eyeball it. I got really good eyeballs. Looks good to me. Now for these parts that I can't fit inside the actual saw, I'm gonna take this long straight edge or square, and then I'm gonna measure the distance from the end of the rail to the edge of the square, make sure they're even in the distance that I want to fit up to the header piece. And then that straight edge is gonna be that nice 40 degree mark that I need to have and I'm gonna cut it with an angle grinder. Woo, it's a hot devil in here. I tell you that those are all right. You know, being that we didn't cut them right on the saw, like they're, they're close enough. They're kind of standing on their tips, which means I didn't get that angle quite right, but we can fix that. No problemo with this template. So first things first is you gotta go ahead and just make one, make a tubing already. So you take the first one, get it on there, kind of lay out where you need to grind as far as the inside and outside throats and how long the sides or the ears need to be. That's more like pipe saddling terminology and that's what I'm more used to. And once you get it where you like it, where that's sitting at the angle that you want uh, and it's you got no gaps or light through it, I like to take some receipt paper, make sure it's square on the cut. Okay, wrap it around the circumference of your tube. Can be a little bit floppy. It's pretty thin paper. 
and go ahead and mark where that lands. You can see right through that receipt paper and that's why I really like it. But once you get those two pieces marked and you can cut with your scissors, cut your fingers, my finger crotch there. All right. And then I like to put that, that piece of tape back on this receipt paper, man. If you let this thing roll off the table, you're gonna be upset with yourself because it's gonna just go everywhere like a spool of MIG wire. So then we're gonna take it back, get our piece of tape ready. I know this from experience because if you like get it wrapped and you like it perfect, you're like, crap, I need a piece of tape. So go ahead and get your piece of tape, get it wrapped the way you like it, as tight as you can. I like a little bit of overlap in that, that receipt paper. You just gotta make sure you overlap it like that every time. And then we slide it up that tubing and then you can see that outline or at least feel it and you can go around with a pencil where you see that light. You can hold it in different lights. It's completely see-through, so that's what's kind of nice about it. And then you just trace that edge. And then once you get that edge traced, you can go ahead and take this off, unravel it, cut it with your scissors, and now you've got your template for this saddle. Once our template's made, we can slide it onto our tube. Gently, it is receipt paper. That's the only downfall by it is that it's really fragile. Then we want to make sure we roll it right to the right spot. Make sure that we don't see any paper showing on either sides and it's touching. That's how you'll know that the roll is right with the template. So whenever you got them touching, then just squeeze it. Take some per blue Sharpie and just color everything in. Just color this whole bit in kind of like layout paint. Just colored it in and then we'll get rid of the blue when we get to it. The biggest thing is to make sure you don't let this template roll on you. If you wanna tape it up some more to make sure it doesn't move, that's fine. I just get a nice little firm grip and color everything in. This backside, not so much. You don't have to color in the whole thing, just, just where you know you're gonna to need to be. And we're just gonna grind all of this until the blue is gone. All these are all ready to go. They're all laid out where they need to be. So we'll be able to trim those up. It's really cool to see how actually how much shorter these actually get after you go and, and cut the miters and notch them from their originals. But anyway, to get most of the meat out, to save this cone, because it's the only thing I got that makes things round and whatnot, uh, we're gonna go ahead and go with the grinding disc to get the meat of this blue out. And then we'll come in with the cone rock to put that radius on there. And you just got to hit it from a couple directions because this is tapered, right? This is closer to an inch and a half than this right here. So you got to keep in consideration. So you might have to swap sides back and forth, back and forth. And then we got an 80 grit flap wheel on this die grinder to go around and around that bit there so that we can get it all cleaned up. So it's ready to tack. It gives it that nice radius with that cone rock but gets the majority of the meat out with that grinding disc. Who needs a tube notcher, right? <laughs> I, I do, I need a tube notcher. Uh, this is a, a loud and messy way of doing it and it's not the most accurate, but it's really easy setup. You just cut the angle in your tube and you make sure you got a layout on there that you grind away and you just, you just go to grinding, you know? It's all about the eyeball work, but really it's just making sure you don't go past your guide marks or your guidelines. The blue lines that we put on there, don't go past those with your grinding, as well as don't go past the overall length that the original miter cut had in it. So we don't wanna take any short length out of it, as well as getting that nice coat to fit. Speaking of, now it's time to fit. We got one done and the trick isn't doing it once, it's, it's doing it twice and making it the same. So ah, here we go, let's get this thing laid out and we'll get it fit up, fit together, and then we'll be ready to weld. One thing that I sometimes like to do before, before starting the actual fit is deburring the tubing. Now you, this is a completely optional step and you can do this with either, you know, your, your deburring tool, which goes on the inside radius of that tube to get rid of any burrs and stuff like that. Or you can just simply tap it with your cone rock real carefully. Now the benefit to this is, you know, one, you may not tear up as many gloves or your fingers. That's kind of the biggest thing. It's more of a safety thing, but as well as, you know, giving you kind of a false edge on your tube or giving it, making that piece of metal there blocking a good fit. So deburring is a, is a pretty good method to just go ahead and do that kind of to take a break from all the monotony of the grinding and just jam out with some tunes and just get after that burr before fitting. So what I'll end up doing is I'll end up pulling the measurements and making a reference line, which will be the end of this first bend. 
and everything back will be measured at that point. And that'll be everything that's gonna be on the blueprint that's gonna be inside the Weld app, inside the video resources. You'll be able to download that, use the blueprint, use the DXF files, use the material list all so you could do your own sidestep build. We still gotta do some CAD stuff, but before we get there, let's go ahead and get this thing fit. Before we get it fit, everything lands. We wanna prep it wherever it lands. So I'll mark where that tubing goes, get a die grinder, uh, and go ahead and get that little bit of schmutz off of the, the tubing so that whenever we go to relay it out, we have a nice clean surface to fit to and weld on. This beautiful Houston heat and weather and humidity is already getting this thing nice and oxidized. So we need to get humping on this project so that we get it fixed up and finished so that we can get it painted and all that kind of good stuff. And we still got to do the CAD stuff and get the steps mounted and get, get the fancy stuff on the steps. <sighs> we can do it. We're going to do it. Come on. Once we get these pieces laid out where they go, we'll make our marks, we'll clean them up, make the marks again so that we have a good layout spot. One thing we wanna do is mark that reference line with some sort of, you know, some sort of silver streak or whether so you can make sure that you've got a good line. And also we wanna designate the roll and make sure that it's zero. So we'll get a center finder, make sure that we're staying centered with that. Put a little punch mark right on the line so we make sure we can always come back and check these whenever we're looking put them on each side just in case now we've got this sucker clamped down so it shouldn't be a huge problem but you never know if something moves something rolls we'll have these zeros these reference points and if you're building it on jack stands and you don't have that you at least have these reference points to always make sure that those stay constant and then everything that we're going to do after that will be easy peasy we've got to build this thing vertical not on its side because i don't have any shims we're ma matching we got a center half inch one and a half on two inch so we're going to build it vertically and make sure that these center heads since they're that's zero these have to be zero too so that's how we know if that roll right there is going to be correct or not so we'll get that started we'll get these laid out cleaned up and all that good jazz all right, we got everything laid out. We ground off of everything where it lands. We relayed it out so it's on nice shiny metal. We'll have our starter of our first reference line at the end, I guess, of this bend right here. Same thing with this other end. We're going to have two reference lines off this one. So the end of that bend is where we'll measure all these pieces. And then that one is where we'll measure these pieces. This guy right here will land right in the center of that bend. And he'll land wherever he lands, you know. So, I mean, that's just where it's gonna be, right? So we need to worry about these two, where they go, and make sure the orientation is right for them to land right in here and vice versa the other way. Same thing when we get done with that part, we'll go into the back side right here. That's our reference line. That's gonna line up where it lines up. Wanna make sure that everything is clean where that lands and then we'll put the two support pieces going in that way and that way and then this guy should land three inches center the center of everything hope that's right hope it's at least long so if it is we can trim it down and then make it fit right if it's short we're going to be gap city so that's the thing to avoid but we got everything where it needs to be we're going to get everything clamped in position we're going to tack everything into place we're going to be using the lightning 275 from everlast and do some tig welding on it we're going to get everything set up with the foot pedal tungsten 100% argon gas the whole nine yards 70s6 wire we're gonna be tacking about 150 amps just getting four tacks on every little spot everything's clamped in position no worries we're getting this thing locked in finished up guys and the last thing we got to do is pull these last two randoms and get those on <sighs> nothing like a 3 p.m piping hot black coffee before welding in 100 degree weather Let's do a montage. Now, while I have everything clamped to this fixture table, which is really nice, I need to make sure I'm looking for a couple of things. Each piece is in line with the zero mark that I marked on the header piece, as well as being level all the way down. I wanna make sure these little support pieces that go in between the steps are sitting at that 50 degree angle as I put these tacks in. I want at least two, probably three tacks on each piece before things get unclamped and moved or we'll put another tack on. We still have to do these other two random pieces on each end. So let's get into eyeballing that business. The 
main bit on the second piece is pretty much completed. We still have to add these random ends at the bottom, at the, the back of it and the front. Now this is for that back side, the back step, so that we can kind of step up into the truck and get into the bed of it. So what we're gonna do, and this is probably not the professional way, and again, I'm really good with my eyeballs. And what we're gonna do is lay this one on top because these bins that we did were just kind of random. We got the same bin, same length. And when we go to put it on here, we're just going to try to eyeball it to where it lines up exactly where everything lines up. All every, all, every little picket, whatever you want to call them, are all lining up. And what we'll do is we'll just take a Sharpie and eyeball that miter, eyeball that miter, then we'll cut them and notch them. And that's it. We're just going to do that to both these randoms. It's pretty random. It's pretty goofy. Whether or not, you know, we get it on the chili, you know, that's going to be a different story. But we're going to try our best and grind the rest. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sick of grinding. Oh, this is where a tube notcher does come in handy. Uh, we used a lot of a lot of grinding, hand grinding techniques and a lot of eyeball skills. And you know, you can tell on some of these fits. We were going to have fun welding this thing out, I can tell you that. Now, again, you can't sacrifice your fit up where the location of the part goes to make your fit nice. If the fit's not nice wherever it's lined up properly, you got a bad fit. Maybe you have to redo it or compensate for some fancy welding skills. And that's not always the trick either. It might just be just a restart. But we're going to anyway, we're going to have tons to weld next week. We're also going to do some CNC cutting. We got to get these things mounted to the truck where those are going to be located as well as cutting some designs and some fancy stuff to get the finish work on this here bumper, or not bumper, but side steps before we move on. If you want to see the full build, it's already done. It's already inside the weld app all the way. All the part, three parts are in there uh, as well as the DXF files you'll need, the bill of materials and the blueprint for these steps. And again, this is a lot of stuff that you can go ahead and customize yourself. And, and you don't have to build them exactly like this, and that's the beauty of it. It's a great beginner project for anyone trying to get into tube fabrication. Stay tuned for next week where we go into welding and mounting these suckers.